my colleagues and I are seeing groups that are in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, as well as 60s that have survived COVID-19 come in and they still have significant symptoms. We're now beginning to understand the impact on the brain, on the heart, on the lungs, on the kidneys. This particular infection is involving all the body. We need to really take time to understand further the impact on it. And it really causes us to be more cautious about what's coming ahead. Let me ask you this, Dr. Shimoni. Are you more likely to have long-term effects if you were very sick? What about if you were not that sick or even asymptomatic? The sicker the patients were, the more organ damage they had. Even though some suffer more with breathlessness and lung injury, some of the more subtle things that were not appreciated early on is cognitive issues. We talk about the brain fog, anxiety, depression. Remember, the lungs were damaged. A lot of patients could not be oxygenated very well. So the brain did not see enough oxygen. That led to cognitive impairment in one third of the patients. We're also seeing reduction in heart function. Kidney damage was seen very often and very quickly in the acutely ill patients. The virus has triggered this cascade of events. The cascade of events not only involves the virus in the immune system, the body has a tendency to form clots. That leads to tissue destruction because the tissue is not getting the blood supply it's supposed to. And since all the organs are tied together and all the blood circulates in one minute across all of them, you can see how this is all tied in together. And of course, some people were not as sick. And obviously the underlying conditions dictated a lot of that. If your baseline is very, very good to start with, for those who are younger, you may see less effects, but you may not be able to do what you could do before. When will you know if the impact of a lot of these things is permanent? I think as time goes on, we'll get a better idea what the baseline of patients are. In the Spanish flu in 1918, as many as 50 to 60% of patients in a four-year follow-up had symptoms four years after the pandemic. We will see something similar with long-term effects. I think over the next multiple months, we have to really address the survivors and to say to them, we understand you're not feeling well. We know why you're not feeling well. This is not psychological. We can help you assess what's going on and what can be done. It seems to me that understanding the long-term ramifications of this disease could make people even more committed to doing what they need to do to keep themselves from getting it or the people they know and love from getting it in the first place. That really is the message today for those who are listening. This is a disease that can leave people disabled for years to come for a lifetime. The impact it has on a family, psychologically, financially, etc. And that's an impact for the country. So we have to do the prevention. We have to listen to the experts, wear the mask and the social distancing. And we have a long haul. We have a fatigue from the virus. We have a fatigue from the impact of the virus. There is a fatigue for the medical community as well that's being added, especially those in very dense zones with a little time off. But there is a array of hope. We're learning more. There are multi-studies and the treatment now is a lot better than it was in January, February, March. We learned that treatment has to begin early. So your organs don't get damaged from having lack of blood supply. As the treatments uh, improve, we're going to see less organ damage. We're going to see better survival. Already, the number of patients who are graduating the ICU is very different than what we had around Easter Sunday. There's a learning curve. It was very steep. It happened really in a war zone, but we have a better handle on it at this time.